So let's talk about using PowerShell Help. Now before we talk about using it, first we need to talk about updating it. When you first install PowerShell, it actually comes with very, very little help. Now Microsoft maintains all of their help online, so in order to be able to access it, there's a couple of ways, but the easiest way is if we download the help. And the way we do that is with the command update-help. And that'll start running an update. Now, in order for this to work, you have to be connected to the Internet. Otherwise, it's not going to function correctly. Because it's going to run out and start downloading our uh, PowerShell help files. Here we go. Now, I want you to notice it's doing this module by module. And that becomes really important because sometimes we have a particular module fail. For some reason, it can't access the help file for that module. Well, because we're doing it module by module, we have everything for all the other modules, so that's really normally not that big of a deal, unless for some reason that happened to be the module that you were looking for information on. Now, Microsoft updates their online help on a regular basis, so it makes sense for us then to go in and uh, do this update help on a regular basis every couple of months. And that's actually, those help files are actually uh, open source now. So you can actually go in and uh, contribute to the help as well if you want to. So now we did have update help failed. We failed to update help for these three modules. Well, everything else is just fine. So unless we were looking for those three modules, that's actually not a real problem. And then if we do this on a regular basis, odds are we're going to pick up the additional information that we need at some point anyway. All right, so that updates our help. Now, the commandlet that we use in order to retrieve help is get-help. And all PowerShell commandlets are done this way. It's done with a verb-noun. Microsoft are not masters of English, so they use this verb-noun structure, but sometimes they do things like new, which is not actually a verb. So don't get too hung up on the grammatical thing. Just think it's, in general, it's verb-noun. So the verb is what we want to do, and the noun is what we want to do it to. So this get help will get our help information. And then we put in what it is that we want to search for help on. Now we can put in a specific commandlet. We can put in a specific uh, help topic. We can also do wildcards. So I can say get help. Let's say I'm looking for something related to the event log. I can do get help asterisk event asterisk and that's going to get help on everything that includes the word event and you're going to see a whole bunch of things that come scrolling by here so i'm going to redo this again and i'm going to pipe this to more to give it to me one page at a time and so here you'll see the name of it what it is so this is going to be the category commandlet function alias for the moment, don't worry about that too much. We're going to treat a command a little like a function, like an alias. It's not a big deal. We'll also see which module it's in and a synopsis of it. Notice that synopsis actually doesn't give us very much. The point is we are looking for uh, specific commands or specific topics. And as we scroll down, you'll see we also have one down here that's identified as a help file. And this is about underscore event logs. Now a help file is something that basically gives background information so this isn't necessarily a command that you can run. If you run about underscore event logs it's going to say hey I have no idea what you're talking about. But if I do a get help there we go get help for about event logs then it's going to pull up that help topic for me. Now, when you're doing help, or when you're retrieving help, frequently you're going to get more than one page. So you already saw me address that a little bit when I piped it through more. And what that does is that gives it to me one page at a time. And so now I can enter to go down one line at a time, or I can hit spacebar to give me the next page. When I found the information that I want, if I want out of it, I'll hit control C. Now, control C in the GUI stands for copy. In PowerShell, it's a break. So we won't select information in PowerShell in the PowerShell uh, console here and hit control C to copy. We'll use control C to break. Now, there is a wrapper around help. It's called, or around get help, and it's called just help. And for that, we do help 
about underscore event logs. And basically what that does, that cuts our typing down a little bit because now we're just typing help instead of git help. And that's a function that basically adds the uh, piping it through more to give us this more capability here. Just something to be aware of. If you are trying to do this in ISE, it's not going to work. The ISE doesn't support the piping through more. It won't give you an error, but it won't give you a paginated display. Just something to be aware of if you're trying to use the ISE shell here instead of the regular console shell. Okay, so we've used we've updated help. We've used get help to try to go find information or go find a command. What about finding out more about that command? So let's go back to our get help asterisk event asterisk and pipe that through more. All right, so if we're looking for event log information, we have, oops, let's do this one right here, get event log. Well, that sounds promising, right? And if we look over here at the synopsis, it says gets the event and the event log or a, and we kind of run out of space at that point. All right, so what if we want to discover more about that command? Well, for that, we could do get help get event log. And that'll give me, let's go ahead and pipe that through more again. And that will give me help on, this is the help topic for this particular command. And we're going to see here the name of the command, the synopsis, which gives us basically a one-line summary. And then the, the syntax. Now here in the syntax, you're going to see it twice. So right here we have a get event log, and right here we have a get event log. What that means is this is one parameter set. So these are a group of parameters for this uh, commandlet that can all be used together. This is a completely different parameter set. What it means is there is one parameter here that is different than up here and vice versa, and you can't use them together. And for this one, it's list or log name. So I can't use get event log and include list and log name at the same time. It won't work. If it sees a log name, it will use this parameter set. If it sees a list as a parameter, it will use this parameter set. If I don't specify anything, it will typically use the first parameter set. We'll come back to parameters here in a little bit. Right, then you're going to see the description. And this is kind of more detailed than the synopsis. The synopsis is a one or two line thing. The description is a little bit more detailed. gives you more information. Related links. So here are other things that can be related to it. Any remarks. And this is going to point you to more information. So this is our what we call the summary help. We can also do examples, detailed, and full. So let's try this. Let's do get help on get event log dash full. And this is going to give me everything. And I do mean everything. So our synopsis information, we've already seen that. Now this is going to go parameter by parameter and is going to give me information about every single one of those parameters. Let me go through this page at a time. We're going to come back and look at some of this in a little bit more detail. Then you're going to see inputs. We're going to see outputs. We're going to see other detailed notes. We're going to see examples. We have tons and tons of information here all in our help. Now, that may look a little bit overwhelming. It might be a little bit difficult to try to scroll through there and find the information that you need. If you are doing this on GUI, and this doesn't work if you're doing this on a core install of an operating system, but if you're working with a GUI, you can do get help. Let's do it for get event log. And then I can add on another parameter, which says show window. And that is going to pop up this little window right here. Now, all of my help information is right here, and I can scroll through it either direction, and then I can also find, let's say I'm looking for the log name parameter. I can type log name and take me to the next match of log name. And this will take me through, ah, here's my log name parameter. Allow me to search through the help. So this is really, really, forgive the pun, helpful if you are working on something with a GUI. If you're not, you don't have that capability. 
All right, let's go back to just our straight get help and let's take a look at some of these parameters in a little bit more detail. So, eh, I wanted that through more. Okay, anything with a dash in front of it like this, this is the parameter name. So the parameter name is log name. Now you'll see that that parameter is inside square brackets. So anything that is in square brackets is optional. You don't have to use it. The, so you'll have the parameter name and then you'll have the parameter value right here. So this says log name is the parameter name and it's going to take a system.string or it's going to take a string of text. You will also have something like this which is an int64 that's an integer value. This one is going to be a date time value and you get the idea. Alright so let's come back to this one. So we have the parameter and then the, the parameter name and then the parameter value. Now anything that's in square brackets is optional. Right, so you'll see right here we have instance ID yeah, grabbed more than I wanted to. Instance ID is our parameter and you'll notice that the entire thing is in square brackets which means I don't have to use instant I, instance ID. This is an optional parameter. But here with log name, notice that the entire parameter is not in square brackets. Only the parameter name is. That means this is a mandatory parameter. I have to specify the log name. So if I type, break out of here, get event log, remember if I don't set any parameter set or any parameters, it's going to use the first parameter set, which means the log name is going to be mandatory. And it says, hey, we can't do this. Command let get event log at command uh, pipeline position one, supply values for the parameter or log name. This is called a mandatory parameter. The command will not work without that parameter. So if you try to run it, it will prompt you and say, hey, I need that. Alternatively, we can type get event log and then put in dash log name system. And that will pull up my system event log, which is going to be way longer than we want to let run. Okay, now I just did that here using, and I used my up arrows to cycle back through my command uh, command history. So remember when we looked at it and we said that the log name was in square brackets, so it was optional, which means I can remove that and just say get event log system, and that will work just fine as well. Now the reason that works is because this is a positional parameter. So scroll back to my get help, get event log, pipe it through more. And you'll see because the log name is optional, this is a positional parameter. Which means I don't need the log name, I just need to put it in the right order on the get event log command line. You'll also notice here, this is an optional parameter, it's not mandatory. Instance ID is optional. And you'll notice that the instance ID name is also optional, which means this is a positional parameter as well. Which means I could type get event log space system space zero for instance ID zero, and it would work. Notice this one right here, after. Okay, this is optional. I don't have to include after a specific time. But if I do, this is not a positional parameter, which means I have to put dash after. I can't just put the date, otherwise it won't know what to do with the date. So this is an optional parameter, but it's not a positional parameter. Now here's another one, as base object. Notice this does not have a value after it. So you're going to have dash the parameter name, and then within your little greater than less than signs there, you're going to have what kind of value this takes. As base object does not include a value, which means I don't do as base object space something else. I would just do as base object. Better example than here would be get event log dash list. Now this is optional. I don't have to include it, but if I want to, let me hit Control C here. Get event log dash list and there's nothing else that I put after that so I just hit enter and it executes and gives me a list of all of my event logs. Alright so that's how you read some of this information. Now if you want more detailed information let's go back to get event log and we're gonna pipe whoops 
get, let me do this right the right way, get help, get event log. I'm going to pipe this to show window. Now this is essentially, this. well, it's going to be all the same information as if I were doing the dash full. So it's going to give me all that same information. So let me find my log name parameter. I'm going to type log name and go to next. Next, right here is my log name parameter. And this is going to give me all the details about it. So the log name parameter takes a string value, specifies the name of one event log. To find the log name, use get event log dash list. Wildcards are permitted. This parameter is required. And then here you're going to see a block of data. So is it required? True. Is it a positional parameter? It's position zero. Now that position zero, we start counting in computers at zero. So the first parameter is position zero, or the first position is zero, the second one is one, the third one is two, so on and so forth. So position zero means this would be the first parameter that you would use. Does it have a default value? No. Can we accept pipeline input? We'll talk about that later on. False. Can we accept a wildcard character? True. Yes, we can. Okay, so that's going to give me the detailed information on all of my parameters. And I can do the same thing doing get help get event log dash full, pipe it through more, and then spacing down until I find log name. And there it is, all the same information. Now, something else you can do. You can do get help, get event log, and if you know the parameter that you're looking for, you can type parameter, and then the name of that specific parameter. So if I do parameter log name, that's going to give me the information just for that one parameter. So that becomes really, really useful if you don't want to scroll through everything. You're just saying, all right, how do I use this log name parameter? So I did a get help, get event log, the filter more. I saw this log name parameter. I want to know what it means. So get help, get event log parameter log name will take me right to that information. Now, one other thing, and I think this is probably the most useful thing with uh, get help, and that is the idea of using examples. So if I do get help, get event log. You'll see, it says right here, to see the examples, type get help, get event log, dash examples. Now, if I do the dash full, my examples will be included at the bottom. If I do the show window, my examples will be included at the bottom. If I want to view just the examples, it's get help, get event log, dash examples. I'm going to go ahead and pipe that through more. So, gives me the name, the synopsis, here's example one. Get the event uh, logs on your computer. Here's the command, get event log list. This is what the output would look like. And it tur or shuts that off a little bit. But then it'll do a line down here, the get event log command, it uses the list parameter to display the variable or the available logs. Here's example two. Get the recent entries from an event log on the local computer. And so this is another get event log log name system. Show me the newest five. And as you come through here, it will give you for each example, the example gives you the summary of what it is, the commands that you use, the output of the commands, and then at the end of it, it's going to wrap it up typically with a uh, one or two sentence summary of it. Now some of these examples can get a little crazy. So if you see one that you look at and say, all right, this makes absolutely no sense to me, that's fine. Just kind of skip that and go on and see if you can find another one that does. And by going through examples, we can begin to figure out how these um, commands and parameters work together. So the examples I find very, very useful when I'm working with get help. Okay, so that gives you a real quick idea of how to update and use the PowerShell help.